Okay, so uh, we're, we're right to start off the uh, the next section of this course with uh, coverage of stockflow.jl, and and this this uh, module is going to build on and what we've already learned a lot of the things with CSETs, with CSET homomorphisms, with uh, categorical operations, um, um, universal constructions on CSETs, things like pushouts and pullbacks and products and co-products and and so on um and um uh, and and also uh we're going to be uh making use of some of our understanding of attributed c sets like we we talked about last time and we're extremely lucky here to have my co-instructor for the course Xiaoyan Li and the creator of stockflow.jl uh leading this section and uh Xiaoyan um, is going to be uh, making use not only of uh, the um, uh, some some use of uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks or slides, but um, she's also going to use boards. Uh, I'm talking across many different sessions, different mixtures. So um, we're going to be trying to position the camera here in the room such that we can. Um, we can capture Shayan's use of the boards over time, known as kindly, um, kindly positioning it. Um, and I'm I'm hoping that someone can take photos also of the board contents and post them to to uh, to the uh, Zoom chat. And I will try myself to post these to to the um, Canvas site for the course. So uh, Shayan. Uh, Take it away. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Oscar. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much for the introduction. So, yeah, I think um, so. Yeah. So as Dr. Oscar's comments, like our topic starts from this class, I think is like to show how to like compose. So our final goal is finally we will show how to compose like the stock flow diagrams um, together like if we have some very simple or small um, kind of uh, stock flow diagrams or dynamical systems, then how we use apply the category theory to compose those um, small like dynamical systems to very complex one. So um, my plan to introduce this topic is at the beginning, I will introduce like Basically, it's like the um, applied category theory is more related to the math part of uh, the compositional framework of a C sets, also named the corporate shifts wire structured or uh, and decorative co span. Then, our next step is we will show, like, we will use stock flow diagram, which is um, the, also using the Julia package of stock flow that the GL to 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 show like how we implement it or how we use this theory to in our research and in our work so i think that is that is my plan to introduce this so um, from this class i will start to introduce the compositional framework uh mathematically so so since uh, since now we we just you know, work on like the theory part so i will uh mainly take the example of uh, the graph st structure instead of the stock flow diagram because like the structure of a stock flow diagram is like more complex and for graphs that is more simple and i think that that, that is more easier for us to or for the students to understand so, so let's see. Um, so my plan to introduce is like, I'm not sure, can you see, see here? Okay. So, yeah, so, so yeah, so basically I think for, to me, my, my understanding of uh, how to apply in category theory, it is like, so to, in the application is usually we start with very simple, um, category or something. It's like we start with a category of a set or we start with a small category. It only have 
a few number of objects or something. And then eventually we we work on that and we we construct uh, from or based on that very simple structure. Finally, we get uh, we construct some relatively complex category, and then we will apply that relatively relatively complex category to solve the problems or to to apply it in our research or something. So so then then that is also the same story of using um, the category theory to to construct the compositional framework of a C sets and co shifts using the structure co span. So basically it's like Finally, what we will see is we will we will see a category of uh, a structure co a structure co span. So so then it's like the composition of a two dynamical system. It is just the the story of a composition of a two morphisms in the category of a structure co span. So I mean for that I mean if we have a cat so we are all very familiar with the definition of category. So it's like if we, so the composition is just a component in the definition of a category. So that is, the thing is like, as long as we see there is a category that, that each morphism represents a dynamical system, then if we compose these two morphisms, then we will compose like two um, dynamical system to a complex dynamical system. So basically this is the, general idea of how we will do, do this work. So, but how we reach there, so it's like we will start, so, so we will start from a very simple structure. So the simple structure, it is just the, 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 the category of the structure of a graph. If we use an example of a graph and usually we normally call it the schema of a graph. So, so basically the outline I would like to introduce that is from the beginning. So the firstly, we will see the, um, the category of uh, uh, graph structure. We also name it schema. So, and then we, we usually label it as GR. So, I mean, for the, for the beginning, um, we actually, for the knowledge, we have seen them uh, in our previous classes uh, introduced by Dr. Osgood. So, I think I will quickly uh, um, go through the, the, the beginning or relatively simpler structure of the categories, but eventually we will, we will construct the category of a structured coast bank. And then, and then based on the schema category of a graph, then we will, we can construct the category of a graph. Um, so if we, if we use sunset, then we can, we can, we can, so we know that so the category of a graph it is it is just a functor category so the functor category is mapped from the schema category to to the category of a um, fin set or set i mean so so here i use the the category of finite set because we use fin set in in uh in catalab.gl so i think i i just use the fin set here then now, the second step is uh, we construct the category of uh, graph. Then the third, then the third step is we say what is a category of a cosines. So, so that's from from step three. The story is become very interesting because if we see a category of a cosine, then we will see the, how the composition will be happens in the category of cosine. So in the category of cosine, I will use two examples, like the category of a cosine construct 
uh, based on the different category of a sunset. And uh, so this is relatively simple. And then we will see the uh, category of a cold span construct based on, on the category of graph. So that is labeled as this. So this is the step three and the step four is, is like our goal for this class of this topic is we will finally construct the category of the uh, um, structure cost band maybe um, also decorated the cost band. Um, but then, but basically, I will focus on structured uh, on structured code span. The reason is in catalab.gl, so it implemented the structured code span. It does not implement the decorated code span. So that means for the application, we will we will use the structured code span in catalab.gl. And the second reason is. Um, actually, I think the structured cost band compared with the decorated cost band, the structured cost band is a little bit more easier for us to understand. So, so then, then the thing is like, I will introduce all the theory based on the structured cost band in detail, but finally, I will have a very uh, quick um, introduction of what is the category of a decorated cost band. Because, um, it's like in our stock flow that in our paper of uh, ACT conference 2022, where we constructed the category, uh, uh, when we using the structure cost band and the decorative cost band, uh, constructing the composition of stock flow diagrams, we have used the decorative cost band. So I think if we have some understanding of the decorative cost band, it may be helpful for us to understand some papers or something. So yeah, so basically this is the outline for the topic I, I'd like to, to introduce. But I, I mean, this is like the, so, so this is like the end of, uh, of, uh, of the topic in this class. It is also like what we have done for our research is like for our application is like we have, we have finished all our work here, but but I mean, in the theory, there should be a, a lot of more beautiful stories happens following that. I mean, the thing is like, we can continuously find or construct even more complex um, category, category structure than based on the category of, category of the structure code spans is something like, then eventually we will find we will see like actually it is a symmetric monoidal category. And then we can we can then construct the double category of based on the structured cost that category or something like that. So I feel that is something like in the applications like our future work, maybe that will be <laughs> done by 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 the students sit here or our lab or, or I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the list, and uh, now let's see. I mean, cause for so for the beginning, um, I think for the first, especially for the uh first and the second. We have already seen this in our previous classes. And for the third one, we have seen them is like the key part is like for the composition, actually, the composition is push out. We use the push out so as the composition of the morphisms in the category of a co span. So I mean, um, it is like for already for. 2.5 or something we have already seen in our previous classes. So I I mean I may will go through the first and second part relatively quickly. Um, the reason I want to talk this again is because I feel that may be helpful because eventually we will construct step three, step 
for all based on the previous um, categories. So I think maybe we start from the beginning, from the very basic one, then that will be helpful for us to understand. So let's see. Uh, the first one is the schema category. Uh, is the schema or category of uh, of a graph. So we labeled it as GR. I think we should be very um, familiar with this one. I mean, so for for this category, it is very simple, right? It only have two objects, E and V, and uh, it has like, if we not consider the identity morphism, it's only include the two morphisms, source and target. Then that's it. So this is the cat. So so this is the most basic category we will start is. So this is the category like the schema category of a graph. I mean that's it. Um. Oh, also, I think if you have any questions, just just interrupt me. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. So then let's see, like the second one. The second one is the category of uh, the category of a graph. So as we have seen before, it's like the category of a graph. It is a functor category. It is a factor category. Map from the schema category GR to uh, here, I just use fence set. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, it can also be set. So the difference with fence set and set is, so so for fence set is for, for each element, so the element is, Finite set. Finite set means it is a set, but its length. So, so it only has limited number of elements for the finite set. But for set is like maybe the 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 number of that elements it can be infinity. So like R or like uh, natural numbers and that is set. So yeah, that's the only difference. So because in in CATLAB we we use fin set. So here I use fin set. I mean, okay, so for the second category is the category of graph. I mean, maybe I would like to write down what is the object and what is the morphisms. Um, I mean, um, so yeah, so, Anyone want, want, want to see what is the objects and what is the morphism for the category of, of, of a graph? Is this a set, set of set of vertices and set of vertices. Set, well, set of, so okay, so that's you mean the object, right? Yeah. So this is a category, right? Yeah. So the category for the category of a graph, the object it is not it's not a set. Set the object is functor. It's a functor. Functor. Category. Yeah. It's yeah. So the object is actually is a functor. Um, map from the schema to fence set. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. So yeah. So actually, it's like we can have. I feel that's like a two ways to to view or to think of the category of. Graph and, and I feel the both ways are helpful for us to understand like the following step. So let's see, like the first way we think of it is like the object actually it is functors. And uh, sorry, one yeah, objects is functors. So the functors like map from GR. To fin set. So the thing is, so the thing is like one object is one functor mapped from GR to fin set. Then if the if we think of like the objects are functors, 
from DR to FENSAT, what is the more reasons? National FENSAT. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. So the morphisms is natural transformation. Because if the objects are functors, so the morphisms are the maps from between the objects. So that is like maps between the functors, then that is natural transformations, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is the first way we think about that. Then a second way we think about what this category is, the category of, of, of graphs is, is like, what is the objects? Then maybe I will tell you the objects and then you will let me know what's the morphisms. So the objects is, we just think about the objects is just the graphs, which is the instances of the schema here. All right. So it's so like the objects is just the graphs. Then if we think of the objects of these graphs, then what is the morphisms? Thank you so much. Yeah, that's homomorphisms. Because homomorphisms is like its definition is it is like a map. So here, like in the category of a graph, so homomorphisms is just the map uh, between graphs, but that map, that map is not arbitrary like morphisms. That is structure preserved maps. So what is like the, the, the structure preserved? It preserved the structure here. Yeah, so then, then this is the, so it's like from the second way we think about what is a category of, of, of graph is objects is, is just the graphs and morphisms is homomorphisms. So to me, it's like what I think of that is like, if I think of in this way is I feel myself is standing in the category of GR. Because if I stand in the category of GR, I can see the, I can see the functors is mapped from GR to FENSAT. Then I can see the morphisms that is natural transformations. Then for the second way I think of the category of, of, of a graph is, it, is I feel I myself stand like in the cat, just in the category of graph. Because if I stand in the category of graph, then I can only see the objects. So each object is just a graph or a graph. And the morphisms is homomorphisms. So the thing I know is like the morphism is homomorphisms and I know the morphism should preserve some structures. So this is the, yeah. So this is the, um, the, the, the second one, the second the category of graph. So, yeah. See, taking pictures, thank you. So I think, I think since, uh, I think now the category of a graph is very important because you can see like later. So that's this one also. So I, I have, um, so I have to write it, it, it down. Just use that 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 is a map uh, from GR to FENSAT. So I mean, since the second, the category of graph is very important. Because if you see like later, you see like the category of a category of a coast bed based on the category of a graph, that is this. And uh, the category of a structure coast band actually um so based on like Dr. Bias and John Bias papers, they um uh, they label it like um uh, something like this. Um, fin set, um, something like that. If I use fin, fin that, fin, uh, a finite set. So, so this is the category of a structure of uh built based on the category of a graph. So we label it like this. So the things like for the following um, steps, 
they are all built based on the category of a graph or something like that. So I feel this is very important. So maybe we will see like two examples, like um, how, how we uh, deal with uh, or think of the that use the V1 and the, the second is V2. Okay, so if we look at like V1, V1 is, um, if we uh, think as an example, because this is, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, because the category of uh, graph, it is a uh, functor, the, it is a functor category. So then we will say like, this is GR and uh, for GR, it is uh, vertices two objects, vertices, edges, and you can have two more reasons, sources and target. So this is the category of GR. Then it map to a category of the hand set. Or maybe I need to make it, make it this bigger. So, oh, oh let's see. Yeah. So like for for example, so so then can I thank you so much? Yeah. So so could you help me to say like what is the objects in the concept? What the objects? Can you give me because I just want 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 to show an example we think of it. V1 of a graph, do you would you like to give me some example, like what I, I will put some objects of inside? Um, just okay. search. Yeah, like, yeah. what's that? Three, five? Okay. Elephant, sorry, elephant, elephant. Elephant is like one, maybe <laughs> for, for <laughs> some corner, we only deal with the skeleton. Okay. One, yeah, so maybe. Yeah. Because one that is like more trivial or something, I want to deal with some like more interesting one, like maybe three. This is set of three. I'm not sure if this is set of five, seven, ten. I don't know. Two hundred. Ten that. Or something like, like that. So, like, and, uh, there are infinite numbers of uh, of uh, of the sets or objects in the category of the satellite. So, and uh, actually, the morphism is functions. Function. Yeah, to turn those uh, sets. I I mean, kindly, yeah. I just ignore the morphisms or functions. Okay. So now let's see. What what is uh, objects of a, it's, it's like now now let's say how we all construct the category of a graph because for the category of a graph um, that is functors right so for for one graph that is a function map from gr to the right yeah so say if that is function f so the function map is I map from V like so so the object map is I, I map an object from the source from the source category to an object in the target category like so yeah so it is like the thing is like if I have a function map oh, sorry function app then then my function app map V to set three like map e to 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 set seven to set seven that is f I can function f e labeled as the objects and because this is only object map 
then I also need the map the morphisms, right? I also need the map the morphisms. The morphisms is like this is two functions, right? Function. Yeah, two functions from seven to three, right? So I can label it with this uh map. This is the map of source. This is the map of target. So yeah, so then this F is one object. So I mean, yeah, so can anyone have a comment of like what what this object is it is 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 it, is it like what we get here? It's yeah, it's a graph. So how many vertices, how many edges of this graph? Yeah, um, um, the is yes. Yeah. And then this, and then like then we know it have three vertices, seven edges, and then how the graph is like what what is the edges looks like is depends on what this function is right because I yeah so so yeah then. I will not to like the, the, the details of the functions, but yeah, that is it. Okay, so because we want to see the morphism, so then we will we will see define another another function. So and we will see like if I have um, another function g, so I the g is the same for the function g. I map from V to an object in the second row. Similarly, I map from edges to an object here. This is something I see. It's not a number term, it is a set. And this is G E. So same as function F, then I have another function G map uh, from source as target. Yes. We have the graph and the yes. edges and uh, five vertices. Yes, five vertices and ten, ten edges. edges, right? Yeah. So then this is only the the, the map of objects. We also need the map of source. Uh, yeah, function. Right. So that is also G. G source. Yeah, G. Okay. So so T now is based on based on the category of a GR, that's the schema, and uh, based on the category of a fin set. Now we have construct like the it's like two objects of uh, of the category thin sets. This is the thin category of uh, thin set. Uh, GR map to thin set. So now let's see. Till now we only construct two objects. So now let's see what the morphisms among these two. So so now there should be a morphism in the category. Of a thin set of a, of a, of a graph, sorry, of a graph of thin set to gr. Then the morphism is so from Natural here. Transformation. Yeah, right. Thank you. Because we have fun. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. For that. Yeah. So it says the morphism is natural transformations. So the natural transformation definition is something like this, right? So wonderful. Oh, yeah, for example, if we leave, uh, if, if we name this natural transformations alpha, then actually alpha have several components, right? Mm -hmm. So based on the definition of natural transformation, so it have it have several components. One component related to one object in the source category, right? So it's like, could you like, yeah, maybe, yeah. Say like what is the component of 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 this one? What is the component of the natural transformation of like this function? Nothing. 
Yeah, between vertices, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, so usually we maybe label it like this. Because, um, so this is the, like, this is the natural transformation alpha, and it's only one component of this natural transformation alpha, it's a V component of the natural transformation alpha. Alpha E for the yes. edges. Yeah, for this one, it is E. So this one it is e. So so now we see an example of uh, yeah. now we see an, an example of uh, what is the like so how we construct the it's like diagonal objects and also get the morphisms um of a functor category. So here actually it's a functor category. So so based on the definition of the, because we know the morphisms is natural transformations. And then based on the definition of the natural transformations, we, we need the, the natural transformation square, right? Yeah. So it's like the natural transformation square is actually is, is this. Okay. We have already right down here. So the thing is like this, this is like F V. This is F V taken in F V, and uh, this one is G V and G E. So then, that is the the square of the natural transformation. That is, we will have two squares. That square is like. We have F V actually this example F V three and G V and the F V and the G E. This is alpha V, this is alpha D. So this is the natural transformation. And then and this is where it's only for the morphism of the source. So this is F source, this is G source. We needed to have this commute. So, and this, this is one square because in the natural transformation, the definition is like for each morphism in the source category, it, it will, uh, uh, it will have such a, um, a commutative square. Because now we have two morphisms, so there is two such square. The second one is for the target, right? G V. G E we have alpha V, the two components alpha E source source and it is commutative. So I mean um so as what we have seen in our previous classes, what I can say is like I think this is very important because for our application or for our research, the thing is like in, in, in many cases, we, we need to like know how to define the, how to define the alpha, like manually. Because what we have mainly seen is like, so in our previous classes, what we have seen is we just call the, homomorphism, the function of a homomorphism to find the order alpha, right? Yeah. But but the thing is like, in some cases, maybe we would like to manually define, it's like we, we, we not call this function. We, man, we manually define the alpha. So if we manually define that, so my first question is like, can anyone tell me what this alpha V is? It's like a something like what? No. Any comments? I'm not sure my question is okay or not, but any comments? It is a what? What is it? Mapping from the first. Yeah, so it's ma mapping from FV to GV, right? What is FV? What is the graph? Is it uh, trunk? No. The vertices of the graph. What F, what F V here is? 
Function. Function is the object vertices to yes. the object um, in the set. Right, right. So this is set, right? Yes. yes. This is set, right? Yeah. So if we think of natural transformations, natural transformations are all morphisms in the target category, right? So, yeah. So this is a set. I put it here because it is been set, right? And the similarly as G V F G V I. So what is alpha? It is a map from a set, set, set of uh, yes. yeah. set of yeah, it's a, it, it yeah. is it's, it's a map from set to set. That it is a function, right? Yeah, function. Yeah. So alpha V is a function. Actually, in this example, it is a function map from three to five. And the alpha e, the component of uh, e, it is also a function mapped from, in this example, from 7 to 10. So then now it is simple, right? This is just a function. It's just a function here mapped from 3 to, so, yeah, to 5. Then we know how to define this function, right? In catalab.jl, that is easy, right? Yeah, we know how to define that. And, and like for alpha, it is also a function. It's a function, like in this example, it's just a function map from seven, seven to ten. Yeah. So so now, till now, it's like, I think it's easy for us just to define two functions and to make sure that this two function preserve the, the structure is like, you, you are reminded this two function actually is, is a, it should be a natural transformation to make this two square commute. Then that is how we manually define if define the, the, the natural transformations or the morphisms or the maps in the category of the graph. So yeah, so but we can also use the function of the homomorphisms in catalab.jl to to find all the natural transformations. So yeah. I'm not sure any questions till now. What questions? Nate uh, mentioned some things in the chat. Yeah. Um, so he just wanted to remind students that the underlying N uh, is a set of one to uh, N. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And all I was, I, was, I just wanted to emphasize that. I think you yeah. had drawn three under bar, and I just wanted to remind people that that was like the set one, two, three. Yes. Because yeah. you know, I don't think we had introduced that earlier in the class. No. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That is like what I was going to say. Right. If I write under bar, that's a set of three, that is one, two, three. All like what Larissa mentioned is Alice. I don't know tiger <laughs> or panda, but it's three stuff. So that so that is just that three really, things. Yeah, three things. That is that. Yeah, three. And this two set is just have some more you can see something like this. Oh, all, all, all three stuff. Yeah. So okay. So till now everything is good, right? Oh, any question? <laughs> So for the yeah. like the F source and G source, which is like functors for source and target yeah. Um, yeah. in the square, right? Yeah. Are those considered sets as well um, no. in the same way or are they different? No, you mean the... Yeah, how, did, yeah, how did those relate with how, yeah. like, do you, how do you have to consider those in class or do we? I mean, yeah, less. I mean, well, like, in, yeah, we we manually define that. Yeah, okay, yeah. In yeah. um in FinSet they'd be functions, right? Yes. Like F of okay. source, yeah. right? Like functor F yeah. and then taking the source morphism. Yeah. yeah. With in applying it F to the source morphism yeah. in GR will give you a function in FinSet. A function, right? Okay. Yeah. So we yes. kind of do that in CatLab when we do the like the array setting stuff where we're like oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yeah. so in Canada, it's something like we can write this at 
A, C, Sat, Ra, and I, then I define, like, if I define V here is V, yeah, maybe you can let me know. I, I want to Jenna let me know <laughs> what this is V is, how we write the code V is what. Here, I define the function F. What is V is? We, we define V, yeah. V tube. So this, yeah. Would that just be like the like one, two, yeah, three. three. Yeah, okay. so the next yeah. the set three, right? Yeah. So V tube uh net one is it seven? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And no, we 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 also have all three to five. Yeah, I cannot oh. remember clearly of uh, the syntax is something like we also needed to define the source and target, right? Yeah. Source and target are functions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then we define it to just and to use an array to represent like one, two, three, or something like that. It should not be. Yeah, one, two, three, because it have, should have three elements. No, you That's, need seven edges, though. It mapped from. You have oh, three elements to oh, choose seven, from, but seven, you, you have seven, yeah, seven elements. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah. seven. Yeah. Same as target. I, I, yeah, I, I also need the seven stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the source is only, sorry, the right. target is only three because there's an E to V. Right. right. Then, then. So that is our code. Yeah. If you look at the code and then that is in math, yeah. what the F is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, good. Okay, yeah. Then let's see the second way. I, I, I want to check the time. Oh, good, yeah. Okay, so if, if we... You will take it for the time. Pardon? You will take oh, it for the time. Thank you. So, so then... Yeah. Thank you. Then the second way we look at the category of a uh, inset graph it is then this is simple because like in this way is what i think of that is because i stand in category of gr because i stand in category gr then i will see the object is functors and i will see morphisms is Lagrangian transformations but the second way we look at it is because now i stand in just stand in the category of a graph. So for category for category of a graph is something like so this is the category of a graph. Uh, we also we label it then set graph because it's a functor category from GR to concept, right? So then how I look at it is each object is a graph, right? Yeah. So so then it's something like maybe this is one object. It's like this is one object. So I have A, B, C, I don't know, one, two, three edges and the and the vertices. So this is one object. And then maybe I have another object. Of a graph. Something like this, maybe. So this is so this is another object. Yeah, then I have several graphs, 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 graphs. So I have infinity number of graphs, right? Yeah. So then then actually each graph is our object. And the morphisms are mm -hmm. homomorphisms. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. The morphisms is homomorphisms is like, yeah, I think there could be a map. So it's like one morphism is, if we think of the first way, is it's just one natural transformation, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, there may be several maps. It is the same as what we have seen. Like if we use the homomorphisms, it will enumerate 
all the possible or all, all the valid natural solutions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like there, there, there may be several morphisms, and the one morphism is just is is one valid natural transformations in the first way, in the way one. So yeah, so I think for for uh for the way two, it is kind of uh, uh more easier or more simple to think of that. But the thing is like we need to make sure of that this is homomorphism instead of a some just a some arbitrary morphism because it needs to preserve the structures of a graph. Yeah. So any are we good? Chama. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I will check my note. What is next? Okay. So now we we are goes to the more interesting one. Is the third one? I think I have time. Yeah, I still have time. So I think I will. Uh, yeah. Maybe I will use this. No, you know, you think yeah, about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I can also use this because we can see that in that board that is the same stuff. Okay, so let's see. Let's see our next category. The third category is category of constants. This is the thing. So this category of uh, co-spans, usually a category of co-spans, it is uh, based on some category C. Okay, so before that, we will see what is a co-span. So, Let's see if we have a category. If we have a category C, we have a category C, and in category C, we have three objects. We have objects A, B, and M. Those are objects of a category C. And uh, we will see some structure like this. This is three objects in category C. A to N. Yes. A to N. Yes. yes. Right. So yeah. So so this is I have a morphism from A to N and a morphism from B to N. I don't know, maybe the morphism I can name it I and O. So then this structure is a co-span. In category C. For example, A is a cat, B uh, is a dog, and N is an animal or pet. It doesn't matter, pet, animal, or something. Yeah, but yeah, but in this example, you are seeing like, yeah, so no that give an example, right? It's like A can be a cat, right? Yeah. What do you see? A can be a cat, B is dog. Dog. And N can be animal, animal. or pet or uh, uh, animal house. Yeah. But E and uh, differences between uh, yeah. a co-span and coral mm -hmm. is uh, N can be uh, everything. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, actually, I coral. feel yeah. Actually, I feel what you are talking about is more like a structured co-span. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's more like a complex code band. Because yeah. the thing is like me, okay, so let's see for your example, like A is a cat, B is a dog, N is an animal, right? So this is your example, right? So so then the code band should be like constructed based on a category, or it is a structure in a category, like C. A, B, and N 
uh, objects you see, right? So like in your example, I'm not sure if I think the C is is a thin set or something. It's a category of finite set. The actually cat is the same as set one. Yeah. Like dog is the same of a set one. But I mean animal, because the in category of the C is something I, I'm not sure it's like animal is like a set of uh, enumerate all the types of animals or something yeah. something yeah. like that right yeah. so yeah so then in that example so that is a set maybe they said it's have cat it have dog it have elephant yeah. something right it can be changed yeah so okay. yeah yeah then in this example yes that's correct um, it is a uh, it is a co space. It's A is like a set one, B is set one, and uh, the, 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 this yeah. I think for the species of animals, this should be a finite set because we have finite numbers of yeah. uh, the species of, yeah. of animals, right? Yeah. So thank you. I think that's a good example. So because, it's it is because a of that man. video that I watched. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> friend is fine to tell about their question about this uh, example. Oh, okay. Thank you so <laughs> much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's a good example. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. So we have this example. But, because I, but I want to use them because I only have limited the space of the whiteboard. Okay. So then uh, we, we have, we we also have some names. We name n is apex. So that is why we see in the code why we have apex of fish out or something, right? So that's the apex. And uh, a is a feet. Maybe also we see left feet. B is right, sorry, foot is right foot and the I we call it sometimes call it to right left leg O is right leg so th so this is I'm not sure this, this is just some names that maybe we'll see some paper or something we call a coast bell so yeah so, okay, so now we see the definition of uh, what is a cost span. Then now we can, we are ready to see what is a definition. The, what is a category. A category cost span. But this category cost span should be Field based on category C. Okay, so let's see what this category is. Usually we we label it or we write it as coast band C, because that, that's category of a coast band, but construct based on the category of C. Okay, so let's see what the object is. So now if we have a category C, then the object of the category coast band is the same as the object of C. So that means the object of the category coast band C is the same as the object C. And secondly, let's see. A morphism. Anyone want to have a guess, or if you have seen this before, what is the morphisms? Do you want to have a guess? Oh, yeah. So this is close band. We have something like this, right? A is object. B is object. So actually, a morphism is something like this. So a morphism from 
object A to object B is a coaster like this. So this is morphisms. Like N A B N A B R. So this is morphism. So this is an example of a morphism from A to B. Because we know that A, B, and N are all objects in category C, right? The thing is like, so in your mind is now the thing is we already have a category C, right? So we already have a category C in hand. It's like for category C, it has objects, something like I have a category C, it has several objects, and it has several morphisms. I don't know. So this is like the category C, something like this. Then, then we we now what we are doing is we construct a coast a category of a coast there C based on the category C. So yeah. So then the category of a coast band C is the objects are the same as the objects of C. So the the objects are the same, but the morphism is different. So the morphism of uh, the category coast band is it's it is a coast band. This is a morphism. So this is the morphism from A to B in the category or coast band C. Uh, any questions? I'm not sure I'm comfortable with this. Could we yeah. give your example there of like yeah. what the coast yeah. band category sure. would yeah. look like? Yeah, thank you. So let's see, like, so this is the base category C, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe I just give the name A, B, C, D, E, R. And there are some other objects, then that's it, yeah. We, we, we only look at these small pieces of this category C. So let's take objects A, object C, object B, for, for example. So are you finding the coast band of these three objects? Like B would be the coast band, or like so, the apex of the coast band. Yes, B is the apex, right? Yeah. So, so there, there is a coast band structure. Then, we take this coast band as the morphisms from A to C in the category of uh, coast band C. Objects, objects are the same. So objects is A, B, C, D, F. So those objects are the same objects of category C. I mean, what I write in red, those yeah. are the so those are the, the structure of uh, coast band C. So, A, so, so the objects is the same as the category C. That's 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 the same. Like all the all, all objects are in C. It's also the objects in coast band C. But the morphism is we need to firstly we need to find the uh, coast band structure in category C. Then as long as we find the coast band structure in category C. The morphism like from A to C, from left foot to right foot is this coast band. So we can say like this coast band is a morphism from A to C. There's nothing magically B. So B serves as B some for this morphism, B is something lives in category C, but it's it it const construct the, the structural coast band. But the morphism is from A to C. So then I, I yeah, same, same as same. this, right? From D to F, right? From D to F, we also have a morphism in the vertices, sorry, with apex E, right? So I yeah. Don't think it's in same. Sorry, apex A. Apex A? Oh, yes, yeah. Thank you. So we also have a morphism in, in coast band C from object D to E, for example, 
the vertices is a line like this. Right? So this it is also cos by factor. Yeah. So so I feel this is a beautiful part of a category theory. It's like as long as we have some simple or base category, then we will construct more and more interesting and the complex structure based on the base category, then that will help us to solve the problems in our application. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. So let's okay. So let's continue. Yeah, there's some more examples. Now we go to the I don't want to check the time. Okay. I okay, I think we have 10 minutes. So I, I can just finish the I think the most interesting part. That is the key part. Actually, we now in this class we, we already uh touched the most beautiful part, that is the composition. Composition. Because for every for for every category, composition is a component of a category, right? For every category, it have to be supports the composition of the morphisms, right? That is a definition of a category, right? Yeah. So now it's like the composition of the category. Who's then? C is very interesting. Let's see what the composition is. What what the composition is? Because because the things like if we only find something of the objects and morphisms, we cannot see this cos by C is a category, right? Because a category should also support composition. Yeah. So the then the composition is for example. So so in the definition of a composition is C. If I have a morphism F, say it is a morphism from A to B, then I compose a morphism from B to C, then I can get a morphism from A to C, right? Yeah, so this is the definition of a, of, of a, a composition of the morphisms, right? So, so, so this is like a morphism F. This modism, G, this modism, F compose G or yeah. So then let's see. Then what is the composition structure in the category of a coast bank C is um this is like K to N, K to N, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's write down the morphism F first. So morph yeah, so anyone tell me what this morphism is? A to N. So it's a cosband. Cos. What do you mean? Cosband, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a cosband, right? Mm. Right? Yeah. Maybe I can say the apex is N. Right? Yeah. So this is A, B, N. Okay. So this is the morphism A to B. In category goes by C. So can anyone tell me what this morphism G is? What is, what is morphism G is? Neon C has the same uh, targets and for that. Yeah. Yes. And because it's a cross Yeah. So it's B, it's a B to C like M. Right? So this is the morphism G, right? Yeah. Now we have morphism A to B and a morphism B to C in category cosine currently is something like we see this the structure of a category C but what we want to construct a structure is the composition of the morphisms in category cosine C right sorry <laughs> I don't know if they sound like something yeah so so then what do we want to get we we want to we want to generate a morphism from A to C, right? Yeah. Must be, um, 
Same between N and M, for example, all between N and M. Sorry. But the Moski, um, uh, yeah. The morphism between N and, N and M, for example. Oh, N it's, N. it's, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. It must be like a morphism from, and yeah, it's something like, so I can, I don't know the label is W E D. So that is what, what, what do you say, right? It's, it must be something like this, right? Yeah, thank you, yeah, that's it. So yeah, so yeah, it must be something like this. Then, then, then we will get, uh, so, so this is the composed morphism from A to C, right? So, so, so the foot is left foot A, right foot C, and, um, and here the legs is the compose of two morphism. Then the right composes two morphism, and the apex is doubly, right? And composition uh, should be uh, corresponding to composition should be co corresponding to what corresponding to okay. okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> then let's see. So actually it's more beautiful. Let's see what the W is. We can construct the, the, the W. It's not just an arbitrary. Uh, it's so so the things like there are many that do something like this right because as long as it have such structure i mean there, there there should be many um such w but here is like we we will find the mo the most beautiful one so the w should be the push out if, if we look at the 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 coast band like coast band thin set or something. This 